Good morning. <laughs> Hello. Um, I hope everybody's well. It's Wednesday the 10th of February 2021. Um, and I've, um, I'm doing some experiments which I'm going to show you um, and tell you a little bit about what I've been up to over the last week or so uh, since I shared my last video. So um, I've been in a, like a sort of slightly strange sort of between journal project hiatus. I haven't actually got a sort of journal on the go at the moment and I think that's on its way. I've got lots of unfinished journals but I haven't got a project that I'm physically working on right now. Um, partly because everything was in such a mess I had to stop and have a really good clear out which I'm kind of part way through um, and have a sort out and maybe if I get that finished I'll let you have a look at my little space. Um, I've also st um, started the 100 day challenge. I'm joining in with uh, 100 days of collage fodder, um, which is hosted by the collage fodder page on Instagram. Um, and that is being created by um, Widow Wonders. Anyway, I thought it was such a good idea for a 100 day challenge because generating collage fodder can be done and it's so open ended and it's the kind of thing that we do every day. It's the kind of thing that we do, um, I do kind of all the time, just messing around and pottering around at my table. So it was a doable thing and will generate lots of lovely things for me to use. So I've been doing that, which has been really good fun. Um, pootling around with a couple of other things. I've been working on my tag for the 52 tag challenge and I'll give you a little look here. I'm just, it's just clipped together at the moment because I've got to add the top but the prompt this week was a bevy of buttons and I got very excited um, uh, particularly because I realised I could use this giant um, butterfly button here which is one that I've decoupaged with a napkin. Um, so yeah, very excited about that. So that's nearly finished. So that's got to be finished. I decide how I'm going to finish this and then I will post that one. So that's that. And then as part of my kind of collage fodder thing, I was looking at, um, I bought this tub of, um, distress collage medium. Um, I was just interested to find out what the, uh, distress um medium was like and i thought i would try the tinted one because in the past i've done that i've tinted um mediums to sort of create that aged stained effect um on the pages um and so i was interested to see that that ranger had brought this out and i thought i would see what it was like now the first thing i will say is a sip of coffee sorry um, is that this is really expensive in the UK. I don't know how it works out in the States, but on one of these, hold on, on the back of one of these, sorry. It would be the bottom, wouldn't it? So um, this, which is 3.8 ounces, 113 mil, um, is 8.49 um eight pounds 49 on amazon um it's 7.99 in craft stash uk um so around the eight pound mark for this little jar um and um that's i think that's about 11 dollars um so yeah it's quite expensive um and if you do a lot of collaging i don't think that's going to last very long i mean i haven't done a lot with this um i've used it two or three times and i've already made quite a dent in in, in the pot so there we go so i've got this and then i thought well you know are there alternatives because i like it but i'm not sure that it's in my budget to buy and use this you know consistently all the time so i'm not knocking the ranger project i think it's really lovely okay so this is what the distress collage medium looks like so i'm going to show you what i've done i had to think about you know first of all what as artists make and makers we would probably have in our homes and alternatives we could use from that 
and then I thought about somebody who doesn't have a lot of art or craft supplies and what they might use. So we've got, um, this is the Tim Holtz Ranger original and I can you see the there's a it's shine it's a little bit shiny okay there's a little glint off that okay so the next thing I tried was matte medium matte gel medium and I really like this um Pebeo studio brand I think it's good value for money and I think it's um good quality for what you get particularly when you compare it in price to the Liquitex, for example, which I also use, I use I like the I use both the runnier matte uh, matte medium, and then they have the matte gel in the jar. And this, in terms of consistency, is somewhere in between the two of them. I have to say, it's not as thick as the pot of Liquitex medium, or as the 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 um, golden matte gel is really thick, or even thicker. Um, and then the Liquitex Medium, which comes in a little flip top bottle. That one's really runny. And this is a really nice me um, medium, <laughs> medium, medium. Um, so this, um, so this is um, eight ounces, so more or 250 ml, more than double what is in the um, pot of collage, the can't speak the ranger collage medium um and the recommended retail price for this is seven pounds ten it's 9.94 on amazon or well certainly with prime delivery um i didn't look further down the list the one at the top was 9.94 um but i found a website called pullingers.com that was selling this tube for 5.55 so my other cue is shop around so i've done some experiments with adding different things to matte gel and then i did also some experiments adding things to pva so the things i used to add to them so we want something that's going to be transparent um because we want to see our collage through the medium uh, whether it's book page or whatever else we're putting down. Let's get that one out of the way for now. So the first thing I thought of, and obviously I'm, if I'm trying to recreate the Tim Holtz product using Distress ink colours, um, might uh, help quite a lot with that. So I used a combination, I think, of frayed burlap and vintage photo with... Um, Just a, maybe four or five drops of reinker with about a tablespoon of matte gel and mix those with a stick and I it's not exactly the same colour. I just put it out of the way, hold on. But in terms of matching the colour of this, I think I'm closest there. If I'd had some a reinker of uh tea dye, tea stain, I can't remember what it's called, um, that might have helped as well just to get that slightly more tea colour. So I did those, um, so let me find that one to show you. Um, so I've shown you the original. Okay, so this is the matte gel medium and the Distress Reinker. Now what I really liked about this, I mean I didn't brush them on carefully, so we've got brush marks in them and I used a rubbishy my rubbishy glue brush so um i'm not worried about that you can work on those with your application but can you see this is completely matte um there is no shine or glint coming off this in the way that there is off the tim holtz one now that this is that's just personal taste but i do prefer this totally matte finish i have to say so that is matte mitt gel medium with distress reinker and then I had a go with some India ink. So here is the matte gel with the India ink. So that gives you, you could make this stronger, obviously, with more. That's quite a subtle effect. But the, the India ink gives you the um, quite a sort of a pinky brown. It's quite a nice colour. Um, so, yeah, 
so that that also works um then i thought another thing a lot of people would have would be acrylic paint so um i looked at the values now what you can see these little squares can you see the little black square and the little white square those show you there's the white square there and there's the black square there so this shows you that this this paint here which is galleria windsor and newton burnt sienna is a transparent pigment um this burnt umber is an opaque pigment and if it's half it's semi it's half half um if it's half black half white so to be honest you're putting such a tiny amount of paint in with the medium that i don't think it's really going to matter if you use an opaque paint because just as if you're working with gouache with opaque that you put enough water into it it will become transparent it will lose its opacity so i don't think that's an issue but it obviously but, but but for a transparent medium obviously using a transparent pigment so i had these two um so again i've got I haven't got a brat, um, you know, it's it's a different tone, but then old paper comes in, in, let me take a little, old paper comes in different tones anyway. So that's another sort of pinky brown, but again, not a bad match. And the, um, let's get those out of the way, the matte medium and acrylic paints here again. I think that's quite a nice finish. It is a bit streaky, but that's partly because I didn't mix it up as well as I could have done. Um, but I'm quite pleased with that finish. You know, and I've gone over the... So the book page that I've glued down on each one was sort of this colour originally. And of course, if you've got beautifully aged papers, you probably don't want to use this stuff. You want the original ageing, you know, the real stuff to show through. So this is predominantly something we're going to want to do with things which, which, which look newer, which is obviously showing it over the white um cardstock um shows you what you'll get straight from white so then i moved on to looking at even less expensive alternatives um and i've got some this is pva it says medium it's pva glue but it's the slightly stronger it's not the really really inexpensive stuff i've bought some of the sort of lower strength kids craft stuff and it doesn't always stick the way we want it to particularly not when we're working with sort of different types of um paper and fabric so this so using a excuse me sorry um using a sort of a slightly higher grade pva um is probably a good idea so i tried those with the reinkers so the same combination of colors um the medium and um mixed all of that up and the results of that one are here we go so here is the pva with the reinker now this is shiniest of all you, I don't know if you can see it, the light catching it. Let me just, there you go, I think you can see that from the slightly the vague view I've got of my phone screen. So it is quite a shiny finish. Um, but again, you know, that's personal taste. I don't like that as much. I don't hate it either. Um, so that is that one um what else have we got so then i've shown you the india ink oh i did also use the matte gel with some pigment powder um i've got some pigment powders called brushes and they're just water soluble really really intense sort of um sort of powdered pigment um, um and i've also got some infusions by is it paper art so 
yes paper artsy infusions these are lovely um so i did put some of those pigments into the matte gel i've got a slightly greeny colored one here um well, it doesn't look so green on here but again that's made quite a nice subtle so some of them are paler and actually i don't i almost like that more um i suppose it depends what you're going for doesn't it how grungy you want things to be so you can adjust um and then i was racking my brains to think you know what else could we use um and i thought of food coloring so i did do one with food coloring now i did struggle to get a color I've, it's more of a neutral gray than a, than a sort of brownish color um and on the page it looks like this slightly pink and shiny but obviously you know you can play with colors i just used um red and green to make a, a, a neutral um sort of the best i could of the colors i had um so you can play around with that and again i so with each one i added the pigment really slowly um because you just want to tint the medium you don't want to make it a solid color so the other thing i thought that would people might have would be um cheap watercolors um i don't have i lent my inexpensive tube watercolors to somebody um well i've given them really um so I wasn't going to use my really expensive watercolours uh, to do this, but I have got this one tube of inexpensive paint here. So it'll be red rather than, than brown, but this also shows you could do this with colour as well to glaze something and, 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 you know, I don't know, you could get all sorts of effects. So I will show you the process with that. And then I was sat here this morning thinking, looking at it all, and thinking, oh my goodness, I'm so daft. I should have used tea and coffee because everybody's got tea and coffee so we've got a couple of experiments to go here so I've got um, a little bit of really strong coffee um, some really strongly brewed tea yeah and I've also got some powdered um, instant espresso because I'm wondering how the liquid is going to affect the medium and with the pva adding a bit of water is actually helpful um it's quite it's not super thick but it's super gloopy so the water seems to help with the consistency of it a little bit not loads um so i think a little bit but whether we'll be able to get enough pigment in without diluting it too much particularly with the tea I think um, um, this is, you know, a tiny amount of water in a tea bag, and it's been steeping for, for oops, for a while. Right. So I've got these three. Um, so I will show you mixing up a couple, um, and then we will see what they look like on the page. Right. So let's get a pot. So let's try first of all, Sir Matchow. So I squeeze about a table oops oh, that was a good start about a tablespoon into there and then I take a wooden stick and squeeze out just a tiny amount of paint to start with and then I mix that in and as you can see you know a little goes a really really long way so if you have any use for pink medium, <laughs> I don't have any use for pink medium. So obviously it dilutes the colour. It's going to give you more pastel hue now. But because this white medium dries transparent, it will probably look fairly different when it dries. OK, so let's grab a brush. <sighs> Bit of book page. Okay, so you know, the world is your lobster, really. You can, um, I do know that's wrong, by the way. I know it's the world is your oyster. Um, world is the world is your lobster is just a family thing. So, if you so, this is going to be quite subtle. So, if you wanted, so that's hardly tinting there. 
So you might think, okay, well, that's a little bit puny. So let's just try a tiny bit more. Hang on, let's just get the worst of that off there. Just try a tiny bit more. Whoops, that's more than a tiny bit more. This will be interesting. Right, let's see what this looks like. This is going to make it look redder. Try and get as many of the streaks out as I can. Right, okay, let's try a bit more of that. So we've got a bit more colour on there now, but you can see still nowhere near as strong as it looks in the pot. Okay, and then I'm just going to um, brush down here. Okay, each box. There we go. So that one's got to dry, but that's the red. It's like a dark red. What's it called? It's Alizarin Crimson. Um, just a tiny bit with some matte medium. So that gives you a red sort of thing. Let's put that one away. Okay. So. I would like to see, I'm going to do one more with um, the matte gel because I want to see if a little bit of um, instant espresso will dissolve in it without water. Because I don't really, this is a really good consistency so I don't want to add water to it. So again, about a tablespoon of that and then I'm going to... Just see if I can tap in a little bit of powdered coffee. So I think the really cheap powdered coffee would also work. Um, I don't have any of that, so I'm using instant espresso instead. Right, that is dissolving, but I think I'm going to need more. So it's certainly, certainly when you put the pigment powder in, you know, it's such a strong pigment that it, it, it really a little goes a long way so it's definitely dissolving in there okay a little bit more Um, I think we're going to need to go a bit further with that. What I might do is pop that one, sprinkle a bit more on in there, give it a quick stir, and then just leave it to sit for a minute and just let some of that soften up a bit. Maybe it's definitely getting darker. Right, come back to that one in a minute. I might have gone too far now with that. And then I would like to try the liquid tea and coffee with the PVA, partly because that would be your kind of, you know, your most budget thing. Um, if you haven't got food colouring and you haven't got, um, you know, so if you've got PVA and um, tea and coffee in your house, you can do this. Okay, so about a tablespoon in each. Now, so this is still, is. You know, it runs and it runs kind of better than the gel, differently. But it's, I don't know, it's gloopier. It's not as nice a consistency. Right, so my biggest concern is about how much liquid we're going to have to add to get any colour. And I think the tea might not work. Let's get rid of the tea bag. I've squeezed as much as I can out of that. So let's get a, right. These are the, it's like hard. That's like one teaspoon. So we are going to end up with something runnier for sure. And I don't know how much colour we're going to get out of it. So this may be a fail. Okay, so I don't think we're going to see. Let's get a clean brush. 
and just clean the other stuff off there. So I don't think this tin is going to do much. Not really. It's not white though. You can see that it's it's off white. So we're going to add a bit more tea. But another teaspoon. That's a half teaspoon. So you see now we're getting into a really runny mix. So I'm going to put that on to dry and see how it dries, but I don't think we're going to have much effect with it. And if I put more in there, it's going to be just too liquid. So we're now at sort of um, single cream. Yeah, I don't want to go any thinner than that. So that's that one. Um, and the last one, before I come back to the coffee and gel, um, that's still the tea. So the coffee has a more um, intense colour in it, doesn't it? So let's try that. Stick. So little by little, and you can see that a smaller, a much smaller amount of, I don't know actually. So maybe diluting it is not going to work. See, that's the reason I didn't do it yesterday, it doesn't really work. I'm gonna go do keep adding until I feel it's too thin to go any further, and see if we can get um, a reason, you know, some kind of colour out of it. It's fun, isn't it? <laughs> Watching me mix slowly, slowly. Yeah, I think we're at the limits now. Maybe a tiny more. Right, so that's the drying tea. It's not invisible, but um, I'm not sure it's worth the effort either. It's fun. Okay, so this works better. So look, so there is... So I sort of diluted, but quite strong coffee in the PVA. Um, and that's subtle, but quite nice. There we go. Okay, we'll let that dry. I'm gonna stop forgetting what these are, aren't they? So this is um, PVA. And coffee, and let's do a bit of a page with this because I think that's worth it. So, so remember it dries clear, so it's a white glue, as with the matte medium, it's a white glue that dries clear. So, any of that, any milkiness that you see over the top will disappear as it dries so that's the pva and coffee and we'll have a look at that in a minute to see how shiny it dries it's been diluted with so much liquid um that was uh matte gel and watercolor that's pretty much dry now um coffee one is drying this is pva and tea for what it's worth is this dry? no not dry yet okay and this last one is 
matte gel and dry coffee. It won't all make sense to me later. So look, I let that sit for a bit. And now I'll give it a final mix. Yeah, the coffee grounds have, have, have dissolved pretty much. Um, there were a couple of lumps in mine. If you'd put it through a sieve, that would eliminate that. But I think that's pretty good. So let's clean my brush again and have a go at this. So here we go. And again, in colour, we'll have a look in a minute as a comparison. Um, I don't think it's that far away from the original. So, you know. And if you've got a jar of the, the you know, the really cheap powdered coffee, um, sort of Poundland, Mellow Birds, is it called? It's a UK brand that was from like when I was younger. Um, or maybe that's tea. It was instant tea as well for a while. You can still get it. It's strange stuff. So that's the matte gel and the dry coffee, which I quite like. It smells quite good too. So let's have a quick look. Let's put this brush in some water. I want to just see these three dry, really. So if you can bear it. I'm not going to stop the video to do this, but you might want to turn your sound down while I just use my heat gun to um, dry these off quickly so we can see what they look like when they're dry. Um, but at the moment, I'm having real problems um, with sort of moving videos around my technology. I've got some glitches going on. And if I don't have to move this in and out to edit it, it will be much easier. More coffee, right? So cover your ears for a second and I'll just give these a quick blast. Right, let's just put my heat to go somewhere safe. They're dry. I have to say the PVA takes a lot longer to dry than the um, gel, than the medium, matte, matte gel. Um, so that's the matte gel and dry coffee. Um, again, dry totally matte. Um, adding the tea. If you have got something there, you've still got quite a lot of glint and shine on it, probably slightly less because there's more water letting it down in there. It's taking a little bit of the sheen off. Um, we've got the PVA and coffee, which doesn't create a bad effect, although you've got your shine. Yeah. And different PVAs may have, so if you used Matte Mod Podge, for example, you wouldn't get this. I don't know how, what you'd get sort of in between, because you remember the, the Tim Holtz medium has, you know, does have quite a shine on it. Um, it does have some shine on it. Yeah. Anyway, 
these are my experiments. That's the watercolour one. And actually, if you had a really nice sort of sepia watercolour, that would be really lovely, I think. Be quite an interesting um, experiment. And of course, this is effectively as a glaze. Um, it would be called a glaze in painting. Um, and artists could use a transparent glaze often to sort of unify a painting to kind of help everything in terms of colour work together so um, yeah you can see there are lots of possibilities for it in, in, in all sorts of different kind of arts and creative pursuits so yes these are my experiments in tinted collage medium and I hope I'll be back with you quite soon to share some things with you um, and hopefully I'll be starting a journal project soon that I can share with you. Take care everybody, stay safe out there and uh, yeah I'll see you in the next one. Bye!